All right, Ninja Nerds, so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go over what we said. Uh, that we're gonna talk about what happens whenever that, when we try to go and figure out if it's greater than, like if it's less than 5%, what happens if it's actually greater than 5%? So if you remember from the previous video we talked about that, we're gonna go ahead and do an example now where we might have to use the quadratic formula, but I'm gonna show you another way that can actually bypass that. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So it says here in this equation, calculate the hydronium ion concentration and pH of a 0 0.350 molar H2C2O4, which is oxalic acid, solution. And they gave me the uh, first ionization constant being 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2, and they want me to solve for the second ionization constant. All right, so what do I want to find in this problem? I want to be able to find H3O plus, the first pH, the second pH, and then I want to find the second ionization constant. All right, so let's go ahead and do this real quick. So first off, what do we need to do? Let's write out our, the entire actual equation here. So we're going to take H2, C2, O4, and what's going to happen? This guy's going to deprotonate, and he's going to be converted into H2, I'm sorry, H, we get rid of an H, C2, O4, negative, because what happens? This guy gives rid of an H, right? And if it's in an aqueous solution, it might give it up to water and form H um, hydronium ions, but we're just going to put H plus. We're going to do this one first, and then we're going to do the second one. All right, so Ka1 for this reaction here is 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2. What do we say before, without even having to do an ice table? Let's go ahead and do this thing where we just use that equation. What is it? The hydronium ion concentration is equal to the square root of the Ka times the concentration of the weak acid, in this case, which is this guy right there, the H2C2O4. And this is going to be H2C2O4. All right, well, let's plug everything in then. H3O plus is equal to the square root of the Ka1, in this case, so Ka1, which is 6.0 times 10 to the negative two, and we're gonna assume that that, whenever we do minus x, that x is so small, so insignificant, that it doesn't even matter, and we can actually assume that it's actually zero, and then it's just that concentration, which is 0 0.350 molar. Okay, so 0 0.350 molar. Let me actually raise that and fix that up, guys. So again, what is this? It's 0 0.350 molar concentration. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this into the calculator, and let's see what we get. All right, so we do 6.0, second, E, to the negative 2, and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.350. And then we're going to take the square root of that. And what does that give us? That gives us 0.145. All right, so let's write that out. H3O plus concentration is equal to 0.145 molar. Well, we said before we assume that that's actually the H3O plus concentration, or in this case, the H plus concentration. Remember, H3O plus concentration and H plus concentration, if you see these two, they're exactly the same. It means the same thing. It's just, this isn't an aqueous solution. I'm just shorthanding it here in this reaction to just take this guy and convert him into H plus, which is hydronium, and into its conjugate. In this case, this is still acting as a, uh, an acid here. And we'll talk about that. We'll get there. But what do we do? We never assume that that's always the right answer. We always take this number, the H3O plus, uh, H3O plus concentration, at equilibrium, and we put that over the initial concentration of this weak acid, which is 0 0.350, 0 0.350 molar, and we multiply it by 100, and we want it to be less than 5%. Okay, well, let's check that out, see if it is. Take that number, divide it by 0.350, and multiply it by 100, I get, holy crap, 41.4%. So that's definitely greater than 5%. So this didn't work. Now, whenever you see this, you know, okay, I can't use this formula. That stinks. I'm gonna show you how you can do it over here, but I'm gonna show you another way. That technically, uh, there is two ways to doing this. I'm gonna show you the one with the quadratic formula and one with a trick. So what do I do then? Okay, well, this doesn't work. So now what I have to do is, I actually have to write out a whole ice table now. If I, if, well, if you're good at them, you don't need to, but we're gonna do an ice table anyway, just so that we can actually see how this is all working out. All right, so let's go ahead and write this all out here. 
And again, this, this is a quadratic formula that we're going to have to do here. So let's write this out. Remember, you have all this right here. And then if you remember, we have this split up and this split up here. And then we have three rows coming like this. And what goes initial, change, equilibrium. What's his initial concentration? It is 0 0.350. And again, you always know that he is decreasing by x, but he has no coefficient, so it's always 1x. And then it's 0 0.350 minus x for the equilibrium. HC2O4 negative, we weren't given an initial concentration of him, and we weren't given an initial concentration of our hydronium, or H+. Plus. And we know that the products are always increasing by plus x, and this is increasing by plus x. What's 0 plus x? x, x. Okay, now what do we do? We plug all of these equilibrium concentrations here into the Ka expression. So I take Ka here, which is 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2, and I make it equal to what? The concentration of my products over the concentration of my reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. Well, in this case, it's just x. But it's going to be x times x, so we'll have x times x, which will give us x squared. And then what else are we going to have on the bottom? 0 0.350 minus x. OK, so now we've done that. Now what do we do? Let's go ahead and factor it all out. So again, what do you get here? x squared. And then you'll have 0 0.350 minus x. And then you're going to have 6.0 times 10 to the minus 2. Well, now I have to factor that 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2. I'm going to cross multiply. So what do I do if I cross multiply? I get x squared equals what? Let's go ahead and distribute that number in. So 6.0 second e to the negative 2 times 0 0.350. What do I get? I get 0 0.021. So I get 0 0.021 minus 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2 x. And then what do I want to do? Well, I want to make everything equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and subtract this over and add this over. So I'm going to have x squared, and I'm going to add this over, so plus 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2 x, and I'm going to subtract this over to that side, minus 0 0.021, and all of this equals 0. Well, now I have it in the correct formula where I can do the quadratic. What is a quadratic formula? You have A here, you have B for this guy, and C for this guy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say quadratic is negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? So now what do I do here? Let's plug everything in. Well, negative b, well, there is no negative there, so he's automatically going to be a negative. So I'm going to have, let's actually write it over here. So we'll have negative 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So what's 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2 squared? So we have 6.0 second e to the negative 2. We're going to square that, guys, and we get 0 0.0036. So we get 0 0.0036. Okay, let me actually do that one more time just to make sure. 6.0 second e to the negative 2 raised to the second power. Yes, yeah, so that's good. And then I'm going to subtract from this 4 times a. What's a? Well, there's just a 1 there because we just never draw the 1, but there's a 1 there. And then C, which is negative 0.021. Okay, always put their sign respectively in that part. And then all over 2 times A, what's 2A? Well, 2 and times this A, which is 1, is just 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do everything underneath that square root real quick. So I'm going to do negative 0.021 times 4. And then I'm going to take 0 0.0036, and I'm going to subtract that from that answer. And I'm going to get a positive number. And then I'm going to take the square root of that whole number there. And I'm going to get 0.296. So what do I get out of this, guys? I get over here, I'm going to draw it over here now, negative 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2 plus or minus 0.296 all over 2, right? Because that's all of our A. Our A is just 1 in this case. So it's going to be 1 times 2, which is 2. Now look at it. Okay, well I have negative 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2. If I take a negative and I subtract this large number for, from it, it's just going to give me another negative number. 
So I'm going to get two numbers out of this. Potentially, you should get two numbers. We'll say x1 and x2. But one of them, in this case, is not going to help us at all. So we're just going to neglect it and not even think about it. So let's do it. Let's do this anyway. Negative 6.0, second e to the negative 2. And we're going to do, we'll do the, the one that doesn't matter, minus 0.296, just so that we can, you know, for craps and giggles here, point, we'll get negative 0.356. We definitely don't want that one. And the reason why, if you plug that number back into these equations that we did in the ice table, we're going to get a negative molarity. We don't want that. So let's do the other one where we add negative 6.0, second e to the negative 2, plus 0.296. And then divide that by 2. Okay, and I get 0.118. Okay, cool. This is looking good. All right, so that's good because we got a positive number out of this. Okay, so now what do I do? I solved getting this, this second x here. So that's my x. I'm going to take this x right there, and I'm going to plug it into each component of this ice table. And I can get all the concentrations, but I don't want that. I just want the H3O plus concentration. What's the H3O plus concentration? Remember, H3O plus is H plus, X. So X is 0.118. So what is H3O plus? H3O plus concentration is literally 0.118. Well, then we found that one, molarity. What's the pH of this then? The pH is the negative log of that. So we take pH being the negative log of 0.118 molar concentration. What's, what, what's that going to give us? So let's see here. We take negative log of 0.118, and what do we get? We get 0.93. So we get a 0.93. So pretty acidic here. So that's our pH. All right, now, we did all that. There's another way of doing this, which we can bypass all this quadratic formula. All right, so here's what we can do. If you remember, we were kind of right, let's come back to this equation right here, and let's write it over there. So if you remember, what do we have? H3O plus was equal to the square root of 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2 times 0 0.350. And if you remember, we did this because we assumed that the x was 0. But when we did it, what did we get? We got 0.145. And then when we plugged it over the 0 0.350 to see if it you know, uh, followed along with the 5% rule, it was much greater than 5%. So that's stunk. So let's say, OK, so let me actually. Let me actually get the, a couple more sig figs in here, guys, just to make sure that we're completely accurate here, just so that we have this. I'm going to get 0.1449. I'm going to actually take that number real quick. So I'm going to take that number right there. I'm going to say we get x is equal to 0.1449, just to take a little extra sig figs. I'm going to assume that that number right there was x. I'm going to assume that that was x. So if that's x, let's go back to what we did before. Remember when we plugged this into the equation, it's 0 0.350 minus x? Well, I'm going to assume that there's a minus x there now. And I'm going to say H3O plus is equal to the square root of 6.0 times 10 to the minus 2 times 0 0.350 minus 0 0.1449, which is x, 0.1449. And then I'm going to see what I get here. So I'm going to take 0 0.350, and I'm going to subtract it from that number. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by 6.0, second e to the negative 2. And then I'm going to take the square root of that number. OK, so we get about 0 0.112 molarity out of this. So again, what do we get out of this? H3O plus concentration is equal to about 0 0.112 molarity. And if I take the negative log of that number there, I will get about 0.95. So my pH, because it's the negative log of that to give me the pH, is about 0.95. So if you see there, look, 0 0.95, 0 0.93. Obviously, sig figs could have changed it up a little bit. But this is a good way of being able to check. So this is a long way of being able to do it. And you get 0.93. I did this quick, little quick little way of being able to do it, the same thing. I got 0.95, but it's a good way of being able to check your answer and see. But again, this could be due to sig figs. That was a, just a little hair off. All right? So just a quick way of doing it and an obnoxiously long way of doing it. But either way, it's your preference, whatever you, whatever you want to do, whatever gives you your fix. But again, that's how you would be able to do that part. So again, what have we been able to calculate? We calculated the H3O plus, and we calculated the pH1. 
we're still not done yet. Now we have to do is we have to take this guy that we actually formed from this weak acid here. This is another acid. He's going to deprotonate again. So if he deprotonates again, so let's come over here to the left. If we deprotonate that guy even more, so let's say we take the second part. So H C two O four negative, and what happens? He deprotonates and forms what? You're going to get. He's going to give up an H. And so when he gives up another H, you'll get another H plus, plus C2O4 negative. That's your oxal oxalate salt right there. Okay, and that's your H plus. Now here's where we're going to use that, uh, that whole ice table thing again. This puppy right here, all the way across here. And then we'll have right there and right there. Banga, bangada, bangada. All right, initial change equilibrium. What's his initial concentration? And his initial concentration, they should be the same. Okay, and if you remember over here from this reaction, what do we get? We had him being X and H plus being X, right? So because of this, 0.118 should be the concentration of both of these guys. But one's going to be the reactant, one's going to be the product. So this one, reactants decrease by X, right? So it'll be 0.118 minus X. So this would be 0.118 minus X. This guy's 0.118, but he's on the product, so it's plus X. And this guy will be 0.118 plus X. All right, so now what? Well, we know him. Because the only way to determine him in this reaction is you take the initial concentration of your oxalic acid, which was the 0 0.350 molar, so the 0 0.350 molar concentration initially, and you subtract the concentration of the H3O plus that we formed right there, because that would have been, um, that would give you the difference between this reaction. So we'll take the 0.118 and subtract it from this guy. So if I subtract the 0.118 molar, what am I going to have left here? Let's actually do that. We get, we get 0 0.350 minus 0.118, guys, and we get 0.232. So the 0.232 is the actual molar concentration of the oxalate that's remaining. So this is the molar concentration of the oxalate that's remaining. So I'm going to plug that guy right there. So we're gonna have, again, what will his actual thing be? Well, that's he has no initial concentration, but the amount that we'll have left over is actually gonna be the 0.232 molar concentration right there. So we actually know his change, the amount left over is 0.232 molar. So now if I plug this in to this K expression, what am I gonna have? Ka2 is equal to the concentration of the products, 0.118 plus X, over, I mean, well, it's going to be multiplied by 0.232 molarity right there, and then 0.118 minus x. Well, these two, because of mathematical properties, they cancel out. So what is Ka2 left with? Ka2 is equal to the concentration of the oxalate remaining, which is 0.232 molarity. I'm sorry. Well, that's what this would actually be. But then Ka is actually has no has no unit. It's constant, right? So what would the Ka2 be? It would be 0.232. But that's equal to the concentration of the oxalate. So then from that, okay. So again, what do I have for Ka2? We already got that. Ka2 is 0.232 out of this. If I wanted to keep on going, I could see the effect of the pH afterwards, right? So again, what was this equal to? The 0.232. The 0.232 molarity was equal to the oxalate ion over here. Okay, so it was equal to the oxalate ion, C2O4 negative. Now, I said that we could calculate pH2, but there's no reason to. You want to know why? Because pH1 is equal to pH2. Okay, there's no change in that. All right. So again, Ka, what, are we, what were we able to find? H3O plus concentration, and you can either do that through the quadratic formula, or you could use this nifty little quick trick right there, which will give you the pH, right? And then to be able to get the Ka2, you have to do the second ionization. And after you do the second ionization, you go ahead and you'll be able to get your Ka2. Once you get your Ka2 right here, that's going to give you the, again, it's going to be equal to the concentration of the oxalate remaining in this reaction.